you know, I started making the box for here and I cut out the front panel for this to fit into. And it goes in here. It's a square opening. And I just did that outdoors with the zip cut blade again. You'll notice that I overcut in the corners there because you know what? It really doesn't matter. I'm not, like I said before, looking to win any beauty awards with this one. I just want it to work and that's what this does. It holds it in. This one also came with these clips that you'll put in here and then push it forwards and that'll clamp it in nicely there. And then when you do use it, you're pushing it in the front so you're actually pushing it in anyway. So that's good. I've got one other thing I need to do with this uh, front panel here though, and that's to cut the opening for the switch. And I've already laid that out. The switch that I have is also a circuit breaker. I bought these a few years ago to use for something else. This is a 15 amp circuit breaker. So you use that instead of a fuse. Otherwise you would want to put some kind of fuse in there just in case something goes <laughs> wacky. You want to, you know, be able to shut the power off quickly. And that's what this does. This is very similar to the one you'll see in a power bar or a, a power strip. Some people call them. And it fits in this rectangular hole here. And to cut that, I'm going to do it old school here. I'm going to drill holes. And then I'm going to open those holes out with the step drill. And then I'm going to finish it off by filing the rest of it away. And overall, it doesn't take a long time. And it allows you to sneak up on the fit for the switch. Okay, so that hole is cut and looks good. I cut tabs into the edge of this when I cut it out. And that's to fasten it to the box. I don't want to do any more welding on the case there. I could have easily welded this part on and then attached the other parts to it. But I want to be able to fully disassemble all of this just in case I need to make changes in the future. So these two tabs here need to be bent over so that I'll be able to screw this onto the case with just ordinary sheet metal screws. Even though the screws that I'm going to be using to fasten this to the case are self-drilling, I'm going to drill a hole in here anyway, mainly because I don't want to drive this screw into this case and into the brick. Even though the bricks are soft and it probably would work okay, I don't want that screw to go in there and push that brick over. Okay, with that piece on there, uh, the part that fills in the middle, I guess you could say, is this long piece here. And this it needs to be bent into a U-shaped with tabs on the end here to fasten it onto the side of the case as well. Uh, to make it bend easier, I cut score marks right along where I need to bend it. So I'm going to be using my vise and I'm also going to be using the edge of my bench to make these bends. The first ones I want to make are these tabs. I'm just going to line them up in the jaw and make the bend exactly like I did with the small ones on the face plate. All right, for these bends, I'm pretty sure I can do that just holding it by hand. Just line it up at the edge, bend it over, and finish the bend like that. Now, just like the front panel, I've already drilled holes here for the screws to go into. I get those lined up, and I'm going to get it all put together first, and then I'm going to take it apart for the to put the equipment in there. I just want to make sure that I have everything done correctly before I put any of the stuff in there. <laughs> the back panel is different from the rest of it in that I've made it from a piece of aluminum that I cut out from a larger one. This is about one eighth of an inch thick and I just cut it out with a hacksaw. And then of course I smoothed the edge a little bit with a file. And I added this angle onto the edge here to mount it onto the cabinet. I also put a little clip on the inside here to fasten it to that side of the cabinet, or the box, I should say. So that's going to go in there like that. And I've already got holes drilled for the relay. I just lost a screw. But I also have to drill a hole back here for the power cord to come through. So I don't even think I need to go to the trouble of screwing this in. 
because I've already checked everything and everything looks good. So what I'm going to do is just take everything apart and start putting it together with the wiring in there. I've been putting the equipment in and doing the wiring. I got started before actually by adding these connectors to the ends of the elements. And to keep those from touching the side of the case, what I did was I cut out a piece of perf board, it's called. But anything that's heat resistant or non-conductive can go in there. Uh, say an old circuit board that you just grind all the copper off of, so you just left with the board itself. And that'd be the same thing. So I notched it around the leads and I stuck it in there. And it can't come out because it's up against the front panel here. I also put in the um, PID and the switch below it. I've added wires to these connectors over here. One of those goes to the uh, solid street relay right here. The other one is going to go to the neutral connection that comes in. I've got my power wire that's coming in here. And the hot lead, the black lead, goes to my switch or circuit breaker, goes directly to that. And then from there, it'll come out and it will go to the solid state relay. I also connected the PID to the solid state relay with this short wire here. It's important to note that these wires, including this wire here, that actually powers the PID do not have to be heavy gauge because they're not carrying any you know significant amount of current whereas these other wires that go to the elements have to be big enough to withstand the current and in fact these ones over here that come from these connectors are high temperature wire this is stuff that I bought when I bought the rest of the stuff for this oven in the beginning. I also added the thermocouple and I mounted that in the top going right down through. Originally I was going to have it going through the side here inside this case, but then I got to thinking that it's a bit too close to the elements. It might not give me a true reading of the actual temperature in there. All right, now I'm ready to put the end panel on. I double check my connections, make sure everything was tight. Well, it's not a big deal to take everything off again, but you want to do it right the first time because it makes you look better on camera <laughs> when it actually works. All right, before I put the cover on, I'm going to plug it in and check to make sure it's actually working. Stand back. No flames, no bangs. Element just came on. I've got it set for a thousand degrees right now. My thermocouple is reading 17 degrees Celsius. So let's leave it run for a few seconds and see what it gets up to. Okay, it's crawling pretty rapidly now. This thermocouple is really beefy, so it takes a long time for the heat to actually penetrate it to begin with. Ooh. All right, up to 327 degrees right now. Feeling the case, not even, still cold. 992 degrees Fahrenheit right now. And climbing, of course. Still on and look inside. See the elements are off just hit a thousand degrees. It's been cycling on and off and maintaining that temperature inside there fairly closely. I'm happy with it. Um, the back panel here being aluminum, it also acts as a heat sink for the uh, solid state relay. The solid state relay is not switching that much current because this thing is not operating on a lot of, you know, power. So the back plate here is just warm to the touch. In the meantime, the case is still cold, actually. This has been cycling on and off uh, to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit for the last, I don't know, 10 minutes. And the outside is still cold, it, like it feels cold. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick this cover on. I'm actually going to test it out with a piece of steel after I get everything buttoned up here just to see basically how hot I can get this to go. Anyway, that wraps up this build and you'll probably be seeing this thing in some upcoming projects. I know that there are a lot of things that I've been putting off making because I didn't have one of these in the first place.